Hi beautiful people, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing fantastic wherever you are in this world. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> I'm taking some time off and it was time absolutely well spent. It, I, I can't even put it into words. I am so in love. I've got a new lease on life. Our grand baby girl is absolutely the best thing ever. Absolutely amazing. I can't even emphasize this more. But like I said, I took uh, the Christmas period off got everything back in the groove of things kids are back at school just the normal grind of every day and you know what i couldn't be more blessed and i'm so grateful and i would never ever take a day for granted i am so so blessed hope you guys are all doing well all those that make new year's resolutions all making good on their new year's resolutions and kudos to you if you are still doing that so you guys it's like there was so much to go over but i was actually down a rabbit hole which i just could not fathom i couldn't wrap my mind around this and what i'm talking about is that psychic tiktoker that was reporting on the idaho four murders each time i watched a tiktok of hers my mouth dropped to the floor it's like what is this woman not getting she feels she knows it she has all these visions you know exactly how it happened what happened who did it she is actually in an active defamation lawsuit she accused a professor from the idaho university in the history department of committing these murders this woman this professor already sent her two cease and desist but she is keeping on with this whole thing that this professor planned these murders. It's like wild, absolutely wild. So you guys, before I get into this, my usual disclaimer, please do not take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusion. Now, I was scrolling back quite a while back to what Katie Joy has been up to and she has been up to quite a bit. Now, before I get into her shenanigans, you know, I get it when people are confident within themselves. I get it when people fully believe in themselves. But then you also have to be honest with yourself. Because I truly feel that Katie Joy is either in denial or she's just delusional. So she was reporting on the sad story of what happened to Damar Hamlin from the Buffalo Bulls, how he just fell unconscious on the field, which was so, so sad. I remember we were driving down to Texas and got all this on the news. And I'm like, holy shit. I instantly went on my phone and I was looking up everything. It was for anybody's heart to just drop and immediately just pray for this young man. But in true Katie Joy fashion, she makes it all about herself. She posted about the situation over a dozen times and then still made it about herself. It's not about you, Katie Joy. It never was about you. Your experiences are your experiences. Nobody's experiences, for the most part, are exactly the same. But I'm going to get further into that. But she posted that any journalist or commentator asking, will he ever play again? Needs to do some soul searching. This man is still recovering and his long-term health is way more important than a game. Period. Now, being a sports commentator and it's just like instinct, you know, will he ever play again? That's the first thing people would ask after having such a terrible accident. It's like, will he ever play again? That's just the normal thing. No, no, not a, according to Katie Joy. They need to do some soul searching. So she is the most accredited journalist going. She knows it all. There's nobody that's above her. She is the jack of all trades. Master of none. Damo's cardiac arrest has been emotional for my husband and I, given our son's critical illness at three months old that changed our lives forever. My mama heart's been overwhelmed thinking about this mama and all the stress she's been under. I'm just so glad she's getting good news tonight. I've been thinking so much about how traumatic ICU floors are for patients and families. 
My son survived. Damo is expected to survive. But I still vividly remember a mother crumbling in my arms after 18-month-old daughter died when she was my son's next door neighbor in the ICU. Nothing prepares you to see death ever. First and foremost, where was this energy? Okay, remember she did an Instagram or YouTube live where she, when she suddenly, suddenly, after being reminded, excuse me, of her son's survival day, okay? And she came on YouTube or Instagram live and she, oh gosh, this was the day my son almost died. She asked her listeners, do they know or have they ever had that experience? Until one mother came forward and was talking about her experience of losing a child. To which Katie Joy got pissed because she felt attention was taken away from her. Nobody was showing her sympathy. Nobody was giving her the attention. She went ballistic. So now all of a sudden, it seems as though Katie Joy has grown. Bullshit. So where was all this energy back then? Where was your compassion for others that have lost kids? Now, all of a sudden, because you want the attention, you want the recognition, your thirst is so real that now at this point, you need the River Nile to quench that thirst. Now, listen to the comments. Some lady says, wasn't Damar the one that hit someone? I mean, the video shows him tackling T. Higgins. Other than that point, I agree with what you've said here. To which Katie Joy responds, what is your point? They haven't determined the heat had anything to do with it. Really, Katie Joy? I mean, at this point, why argue with people? Now, remember, Katie Joy always sets boundaries. She says she sets boundaries, okay? Nobody must talk about her son, ask about her son, all that bullshit. But check this out. So a top fan asks, what happened with your son? To which she opens up and says, he suffered respiratory failure, liver failure, cardiac failure as an infant. He had an underlying life-threatening condition that had gone undiagnosed. When he was admitted into the hospital, his blood sugar was seven. He was hypothermic, needed multiple blood transfusions, was on a vent, had a line to his heart to pump dopamine. His liver went into failure. It was so scary. But the doctors were so incredible and had a hunch that, that it could be a very rare disease. It was. And they began steroids and he rebounded. He received a new diagnosis and team of doctors and survived. He was an event for a week. It was a journey. Thank you, Lord. First of all, for this young man's amazing story. For those amazing doctors that caught all this. It's okay for her. To tell her son's story, to gain sympathy, to gain attention, to try to be relatable. But when people ask how her son is doing, her son is off limits. Off limits. But when it comes to situations like this, for her to come across as the queen mother, mother of the century, mother of the world, mother of the year, whatever you want to think about it, or she wants that acknowledgement, she'll go out there and she'll put her son's diagnosis out there. But let somebody ask about it. She will tell you who you are. But it's okay for her to exploit her son's medical condition for her own recognition. She will tell you her son's story when she needs to get out of shit. She will tell you all about her son when she needs favor or if it benefits her. And again, I'm going to say this. Where was this energy? Where was this energy when it came to Sue Elliott? One of her subscribers that were telling her story on how she lost her daughter. Where was this energy when she was reporting on the Mavon McCray case? Remember, how can one mother of a Vaughan not help another mother of a Vaughan? Where is she when the whole of the internet was talking about Corey from Cracking the Box? The poor young man. The young man 
that is suffering heart failure, that's in palliative care right now. Where is she to talk about his story? Why? Because that's not going to benefit her. Oh, no, no, no. It's all about her, what she's going through, how she's going to garner that sympathy to gain more followers, in turn gain monetary value from all this. It's okay for her to exploit her son when it suits her. This woman needs to be humbled. It's not going to happen in our time. It is going to happen, but it takes time. So as I said in the beginning, we just here for the journey with you, Katie Joy. That's all we here for. Get it together, girl. Because this is not even the first thing. Apparently, she was off the chain these past few weeks, especially with this whole sister-wife situation. But anyway, you guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Please be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And don't forget to make good memories. Bye, guys.